Hi everyone, today we'll be going over accounts, May-June 2020, paper 3-1, question number 1. This is structured paper 3, which consists 6 questions, each of 25 marks, and we are also given a time limit of 3 hours. So we will be attempting to solve each question under 30 minutes. And this question number 1 is a part of section A, which relates to financial accounting. Now without any further delay, let's get started. The following are the statements of financial position for W Limited at 31st December. So we are given the statements of financial position for the year ended 31st December 2018 and 31st December 2019. Alright, let's have a look. We are also given additional information. Let's have a look at our first question. For the first part of this question, we need to see three differences between a statement of cash flows and a cash budget. Alright, let's write it down. We know that the statement of cash flows uses historical data, meaning that all of the cash transactions that have already occurred are recorded in our statement of cash flows. But if we're talking about cash budget, then those are the predicted figures or estimated values for the future days, right? So that's a major difference. Let's write it down. Statement of cash flows. Uses historical data. Whereas, cash budget uses predicted figures. Okay, then we know that for statement of cash flows, there is a format prescribed by International Accounting Standard 7. But if we're talking about cash budget, then there is no prescribed format. So let's write it down. Statement of cash flows format is prescribed by International Accounting Standard Seven, whereas there is no prescribed format for cash budget. Okay, then the third difference would be that the statement of cash flows is actually used by investors to make financial decisions, whereas a cash budget is used by management to make management decisions. So let's write it down. Statement of cash flows is used by investors. To make financial decisions whereas cash budget is used by management to make management decisions. All right, this concludes the first part of this question. Now we can move towards the second one. For the second part, we need to prepare a statement reconciling the profit from operations with the cash from operations for the year ended 31st December 2019. So whenever we are trying to reconcile our profit from operations with the cash from operations, we just have to adjust all of our non-cash expenses to profit from operations and we need to adjust the increment and decrement of our current assets and current liabilities as well. Okay, so we can start with our profit from operations. Let's have a look above. We are given the profits from operations for the year ended 31st December 2019 to be 55,950. So we just substitute this value into our statement. So 
So that's 55,950. Okay, then like I said before, we now have to adjust all of our non-cash expenses first. And the major non-cash expense would be of depreciation. Let's have a look above. Okay, we can see that our non-current assets are premises, machinery, and motor vehicles. So we need to calculate the depreciation related to these three headings. So let's first look for premises. We can see that in our additional information, we are given that premises were revalued at 400000 on 1st January 2019. Then there were no purchases or disposals of premises during the year. So since this is revalued, we can just figure out our depreciation charge for the year. by subtracting the revalued amount with our net book value. So we can see that the revalued amount is 400,000. And we just need to subtract our net book value, which is given in the statement of financial position. And we're talking about the year 2019, so we will be looking at this column. And we can see that the premises is valued at 380,000, which is its net book value. So let's subtract this from our revalued amount in order to figure out the depreciation charge for the year. So the depreciation charge for the year on premises would be 400,000 minus 380,000, which is 20,000. And we know that this 20,000 was reduced in order to figure out the profit from operations, although this is a non-cash expense, meaning that this expense should not be included in our cash flow statement. So if it were subtracted previously, now we just need to add it back to cancel out this effect. So we will be adding our depreciation on premises in our statement for reconciling the profit from operations with our cash from operations. So we will be adding the depreciation on premises. And that we figured out to be 20,000. Okay, now we move towards figuring out our depreciation on machinery. Let's look at our given information. We can see that additional machines costing 28,000 were purchased, so there were new purchases of machines, right? So in order to figure out the depreciation, we will have to use the uh, statement of non-current assets. So I'm just going to write it down. So our statement is just that we start with the net book value for previous year, right? And then we add all of our new purchases. And these purchases are recorded at its cost. Then we subtract all of our disposals. And disposals are always subtracted at its net book value. And then we also subtract our depreciation charge for the year. And this will give the net book value for this year. Okay. So I'm just going to write it down in a form of an equation for figuring out our depreciation for the year for machinery. So we will be starting with the net book value for previous year and our current year is 2019, meaning that the previous year would be 2018. And we can see that the net book value for machinery for the previous year was 202,000. So we will be starting with this value. And we know that all of our new purchases are to be added. And in the given information, we can see that additional machines costing 28,000 were purchased. So we will just be adding the amount of 28,000. Then we need to subtract all of our disposed machineries at its net book value. So let's have a look. Third information relates to motor vehicle. Fourth one relates to tax and interest charge. And the fifth one relates to dividend, meaning that there is no disposal of machinery. So that is just going to be zero, right? So that's minus zero. And then we need to subtract the depreciation. And we need to figure out this value. Then this will give the net book value for the current year, which we already have in our statement of financial position right here. So we can see that the net book value for the current year for machinery is 203,000. Now this is a simple equation. We can solve it in order to figure out the depreciation amount. So the depreciation amount would just be 202,000 plus 28,000 minus 203,000. Okay, so this gives the machinery depreciation charge for the year to be 202,000 plus 28,000 minus 203,000, which results in the value of 27,000. 
again this is a depreciation that we subtracted in order to figure out the profit from operations but we know that depreciation is a non-cash expense which should not be included in our cash from operations so in order to reverse this effect previously it was reduced so now we just have to add this amount back so let's add the machinery depreciation of 27,000 in our statement below so we have to add our depreciation on machinery which we just figured out to be 27,000 okay then finally our third non-current asset is motor vehicles and we need to figure out its depreciation charge for the year as well okay we will start with uh, our net book value for previous year we will follow this schedule for our non current assets for our motor vehicles as well okay so we can see that our previous year was 2018 and the net book value for our motor vehicles on that particular year was 118,000 let's have a look at the given information we can see that the motor vehicle costing 65,000 with an accumulated depreciation of 26,000 was sold during the year all right, so whenever we're talking about sales of non-current assets, that is a disposal. And the disposal of non-current assets is always recorded at its net book value. So we need to figure the net book value of this motor vehicle. We are given the cost to be 65,000 and the accumulated depreciation to be 26,000. And we know that the net book value is just the difference between cost and the accumulated depreciation. So that's going to be 65,000 minus 26,000. So this gives the net book value of our disposed motor vehicle to be 39,000. Let's substitute this value in our equation above. So the disposed vehicle is always to be subtracted. So that's minus 39,000. Let's have a look at the information again. And we are also told that it was replaced by a new motor vehicle at a cost of 74,000. And the purchase of new non grant assets is always recorded at cost. So we just have to add this amount of 74,000 into our equation. So that's plus 74,000. And then there's the depreciation charge, which we need to subtract, which gives the net book value for the current year. And the current year is 2019. We can see that our net book value for motor vehicles is 113,200. Okay, so this is a very simple equation now. We can figure out our depreciation charge. So that's going to be 118,000 minus 39,000 plus 74,000 minus 113,200. All right, so this gives the depreciation charge on motor vehicles for the year ended 31st December 2019 to be 118,000 minus 39,000 plus 74,000 minus 113,200 to be 39,800. Again, this is the depreciation that we subtracted in order to figure out the profit from operations. And we know that depreciation is a non-cash expense. So in order to reverse this effect previously the depreciation was subtracted so now we just have to add it back into our statement let's do that so we're going to add the depreciation on motor vehicles which we figured out to be 39,800 Okay, and we know that there was a disposal, right? So we need to look at it as well. And the disposed motor vehicle had the net book value of 39,000, whereas it was sold for only 32,500, meaning that there was definitely a loss, right? Let's figure out this loss on disposal. That's just going to be the difference between the net book value and the disposed amount. So that's 39,000 minus the disposal value of 32,500. So this gives the loss on disposal of motor vehicles to be 6,500 and we know that this loss was reduced in order to figure out our profit from operations so this loss is not actually a cash expense right and since this is a non-cash expense we do not want to include it in our cash from operations so in order to reverse this effect previously it was reduced so now we just have to add this loss back to our statement let's do that so let's add loss on disposal of motor vehicles 
and we figured it out to be 6,500. So let's have a look above. We already included all of our non-cash expenses, right? So now we can move towards adjusting the increment and decrement in the current assets and current liabilities. So let's have a look at our current assets. We can see that the inventory previously was 36,500 and for the current year it is 32,550, meaning that the amount has definitely reduced, right? So there is a decrease in inventory. Let's figure out the decrement amount. That's just going to be the difference between the previous year's amount and the current year's amount. So that's 36,500 minus 32,550, which results in the value of 3,950. And in case of assets, the decrement is always added, right? So let me give an example. So if we're talking about the furniture, and if we purchase a furniture, there is increment in the furniture value, right? But whenever we purchase, there is a cash out, and that is an expense. So the increment is always a cash outflow. But we're talking about decrement, which is a cash inflow, so we just add this amount back into our statement. Let's do that. So let's add decrease in inventory. We figured it out to be 3950. Let's have a look above. Now we move towards another current assets. There is trade receivables. Previously, its amount was 46,200 and currently it has increased to 49,300. So the increment value is just going to be the current year's value of 49,300 minus the previous year's value of 46,200, which results in the total increment in trade receivables to be 3,100. Like I said before, the increment in assets is always a cash outflow, meaning that this value of 3,100 should be reduced in our statement. Let's do that. So that's less increase in trade receivables. We figured the value to be 3,100 and since this is to be subtracted, we need to record it in a bracket. All right, let's have a look above. So we already included the inventory and trade receivables, but remember that the cash at bank should not be included because we are preparing a cash flow. So now we just move towards our current liabilities. We can see that the trade payables previously was 36,700 and currently it is 41,000. So there is definitely an increment and the increment is of the current year's value 41,000 minus the previous year's value of 36,700, which results in the increment in trade payables to be 4,300. And remember that there is a negative relation between assets and liabilities. So if we included our increase in assets as a cash outflow, then the increase in liabilities is definitely a cash inflow, meaning that this amount of 4,300 should be added in our statement. Let's do that. So let's add increase in trade payables. We figured it out to be 4,300. Okay, then let's have a look above. We are given another current liabilities of tax payable and accrued interest. But since we are only preparing the cash from operations, these two will be excluded because these two are not included in the cash from operations, but they are definitely included in our net cash flow from operating activities. So we just exclude these two for now which means that we've concluded everything that is to be recorded in our statement to reconcile the profit from operations with cash from operations. Okay, so now we move towards figuring out our cash from operations. Okay, that is just going to be the sum of these eight amounts. So that's 55,950 plus 20,000 plus 27,000 plus 39,800 plus 6,500 plus 3,950 minus 3,100 plus 4,300, which results in our cash from operations to be 154,400. So this concludes the second part of this question. Now we can move towards the third one. 
you can see that we were given a working section so instead of scribbling all over the question paper like i did you guys should be showing all of your workings in this particular box okay now for the third part of this question we are to prepare a statement of cash flows for the year ended 31st december 2019 and we are to start our answer from cash from operations that we figured out in part b okay so firstly we will be figuring our cash flow for operating activities and for operating activities we will be starting with cash from operations let's have a look above we can see that the cash from operations is 154,400 let's write it down Now the only thing remaining to include in our cash flow from operating activities is the tax and interest. So let's have a look above. Let's figure out the value for tax first. So we can see that the tax for the year amounted to 13,400. Okay, let's have a look above. And we can also see that the tax payable, this is a provision for tax payable, this is a liability, right? And for this year, the tax payable is 13,400, meaning that this year's tax is not yet paid. And we can also see that the statement of financial position for previous year also includes the tax payable of 12,600, meaning that this tax was not paid in the previous year, but we definitely have to pay this tax in the current year of 2019, since this is a current liability and this needs to be paid within a year, right? So the tax paid for the year 2019 would be actually 12,600 because this is the cash that went out from our company for tax. So we will be including this amount. And since tax paid is an expense, that is definitely a cash outflow. So that will be reduced. Let's write it down. So that's tax paid of 12,600. Okay, now we move towards figuring out our interest payment. We can see that the interest charge for the year amounted to 8,250. So let's have a look at our liability. So what we know is that the interest charge for the year 2019 was 8,250. And out of the total of this amount, we can see that only 750 is remaining to be paid. So if 750 is remaining, then this means that we paid the remaining amount of 8,250 minus 750, right? And we can also see that there is accrued interest of previous year amounting to 2,500. So if this was a liability for the year 2018, this must have been paid in the year 2019, right? This means that we also paid the interest of 2,500. Okay, so the total interest paid in the year 2019 would be 8,250 minus 750 plus 2,500, which results in the value of 10,000. And since this is an interest paid, this is definitely a cash outflow, meaning that this should be reduced in our statement of cash flows. Let's do that. We have our interest paid. Of 10,000. And this should be subtracted. Now we've included everything in our operating activities. So we can easily figure out the net cash from operating activities. That is just going to be the sum of these three amounts. So that's 154,400 minus 12,600 minus 10,000, which results in the value of 131,800. Okay, so this concludes the first section of operating activities. Then we move towards the second section of investing activities. And investing activities is only related to the non-current assets. So in this section, we record all of our purchases made for the non-current assets and the sales made for the existing non-current assets. Let's have a look above. In our given information, we can see that additional machines costing 28,000 were purchased during the year. So if we purchase a new non-current asset, we obviously have to pay for it, right? Meaning that any additional purchases of non-current assets would result in a cash outflow. And outflows are always subtracted. So we need to subtract this amount of 28,000 under the heading of purchase of machinery. Let's do that. 
So that's purchase of machinery. With the value 28,000. And since this is a cash outflow, we need to subtract it. So I'm just going to write it in bracket. Okay, let's have a look at our information again. We know that we also purchased a motor vehicle. A new motor vehicle was purchased at the cost of 74,000. So we need to subtract this as well. And we can record it under the heading of purchase of new motor vehicle. So purchase of motor vehicle. And this amounted to 74,000. Since this is a cash outflow, this should be subtracted. Let's have a look above. We also disposed our motor vehicle, right? And we can see that a motor vehicle costing 65,000 with an accumulated depreciation of 26,000 was sold during the year 32,500. And whenever we sell something, we receive cash for its exchange, right? So if we sold our motor vehicle, we received 32,500. This is definitely a cash inflow. And inflows are always added in our cash flow statement. So let's add this amount of 32,500 under the heading of sale proceeds of motor vehicle. Sale proceeds of motor vehicle. So that's 32,500. So this concludes all of the transactions that took place in the year relating to our non-current assets, meaning that we can now move towards figuring out our net cash from investing activities. The total for net cash from investing activities is just going to be the sum of these three months. So that's minus 28,000 minus 74,000 plus 32,500, which results in the value of 69,500. And this is a negative value, so we need to record it in a bracket. Okay, now we can move towards our financing activities. And financing activities relates to our capital and our non-current liabilities. So let's have a look above. We can see that our ordinary share capital previously was 400,000, whereas it has now increased towards 440,000, right? And as I said previously, the increment in assets was actually a cash outflow, whereas the increment in liabilities and equity is actually a cash inflow. So the increase in ordinary share capital here is going to be 440,000 minus 400,000, which results in the value of 40,000. And since this is an increment of equity, this is definitely a cash inflow, meaning that this amount should be added in our statement of cash flows. Let's do that. So we can record it under the heading of increase in ordinary share capital and this amounted to 40,000 let's have a look above we can see that our share premium previously was 40,000 whereas for this year this is 60,000 so obviously share premium has also increased let's figure out the increment that's just the difference between this year's value of 60,000 minus the previous year's value of 40,000 so the increment is basically 20,000 and this is cash inflow. So this needs to be added in our cash flow statement. Let's do that. We can record it under the heading of increase in share premium. And the value is 20,000. Let's have a look above. We can see that there is also an increment in general reserve and a decrement in retained earnings, but these two should not be included in our cash flow statement because retained earnings, it's basically our profit, right? And the profit is always included in the operating activities section and general reserve includes those amounts that have been transferred from the retained earnings. 
So meaning that this should also not be included. So now we can jump towards our non-current liabilities. We can see that we had the bank loan of 100,000 last year, whereas this year it's only 30,000. So there is definitely a decrease in the bank loan, meaning that we repaid our bank loan. So that's definitely a cash outflow, right? So that's a negative. Let's figure out the difference that 100,000 minus 30,000, which results in the value of 70,000. So this means that 70,000 of the bank loan was repaid. And since this is a cash outflow, we need to subtract it in our statement of cash flow. Let's do that. So we can record it as repayment of loan. Which amounted to 70,000 and since this is an outflow this should be subtracted okay let's have a look above we also know that dividend was paid so interim dividend of 0.11 per share was paid in august 2019 before 40,000 additional ordinary shares were issued for cash so let's have a look above we can see that our ordinary share has a nominal rate of dollar one so before issuing forty thousand additional ordinary shares we had four hundred thousand ordinary shares right and for each ordinary share we provided an interim dividend of 0 0.11 let's figure out the total dividend that's just the number of shares which is four hundred thousand times the dividend paid of 0 0.11 per share so this gives our total dividend to be 400,000 times 0 0.11, which results in the value of 44,000. And since this is the dividend that we are paying to our shareholders, this is definitely a cash outflow. So this needs to be subtracted in our statement of cash flows. Let's do that. So we can write it down as dividend paid. And this had the amount of 44,000. Okay, this concludes all of the transactions to be recorded in our financing activities. So we can move towards filling out the net cash from financing activities. That is just going to be the sum of these four amounts. So that's 40,000 plus 20,000 minus 70,000 minus 44,000, which results in the value of negative 54,000. Since we have completed our three sections of operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities, we can now move towards figuring out whether there was an increase or decrease in the total cash and cash equivalents. And that is just going to be the sum of net cash from all of these three activities. So that's 131,800 minus 69,500 minus 54,000, which results in the value of 8,300. And since this is a positive amount, obviously there is an increase. So we can write down net increase in cash and cash equivalents. And now we need to add our opening cash balance. So let's have a look above. This is given in our statement of financial position. We can see we are given cash at bank right here. And the opening balance would be that of the previous year, which is 8,100. So let's add this value. So we add our opening cash and cash equivalents, which is 8,100. And now we are just the net increase in order to figure out our closing cash and cash equivalents. So that's the sum of these two amounts, 8,300 plus 8,100, which results in the value of 16,400. This is the closing cash and cash equivalents. Now, in order to check whether our cash flow statement is correct or not, we can just refer to our statement of financial position above. And here we can see that the closing value of the cash at bank was 16,400, which is exactly what we figured out as our closing cash and cash equivalents, meaning that our cash flow statement is indeed correct. So this concludes the third part of this question. Now we can move towards the fourth one. 
For the fourth part, we need to discuss the effect of an increase in general reserve during the year in cash flow. Like I said before, general reserve gets its money from retained earnings. So if you remember our statement of changes in equity, there's general reserve and retained earnings. And there is always a transfer from retained earnings to the general reserve. And that's the principle, right? Whenever we're creating a reserve, the reserve should be created from our profits. And profits are recorded in the retained earnings, right? So the amount from one section is just transferred to another section. So there is not really any cash inflows and outflows. So this is just internal cash flows, right? Which does not affect our cash flow at all. Let's write it down. Increase in general reserve. is due to a transfer from retained earnings to general reserve and not a cash transaction. So there is no impact on cash flow. So this concludes the fourth part of this question. Now we can move towards the fifth one. We can see that we are given additional information. The bank loan of 100,000 was to be repaid in 2022. And the directors made an early repayment in part on 30 September 2019. We know that we calculated the repayment of bank loan to be of 70,000, right? And now for the fifth part of this question, we need to discuss whether or not the directors were right in repaying part of the bank loan during the year under 31st December 2019. Alright, first of all, let's have a look at our cash flow. We can see that there is a net increase despite the repayment of loan. We can write it down. So there is still net increase in cash and cash equivalents, even though part of the loan was repaid and we know that the increment in cash and cash equivalents was of 8300 so we can see that this is a pretty small increase so but it is a small increase let's have a look at our statement again we can see that there was additional inflow from issue of shares, right? So let's write it down. Additional shares were issued. So this obviously negated the impact of repayment of the bank loan amounting to 70,000. But we also know that we made purchases of new non-current assets and we also paid a dividend of 44,000, right? So we can consider it as well. Had to pay dividend. And additional non-current assets. But also, since we paid our bank loan back, we are also saved from paying the loan interest. Let's write it down. Save from paying loan interest. Now, considering all these factors, we have to decide whether the directors are right or not in repaying part of the bank loan during the year under 31st December 2019. So considering that there was a net increase in cash and cash equivalents, despite having to pay dividend and purchasing additional non-current assets, I would say that the directors were right in repaying part of the bank loan. Let's write it down clearly. 
the directors were right in repaying part of the bank loan during the year ended 31st December 2019. Alright, this concludes the fifth part of this question as well as this entire question. If you found this video useful, make sure you like the video and leave a comment below. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future. Thank you.